Hey everybody, this is Sheets, and we're going to be doing a UFC uh, betting breakdown for UFC Denver. And again, for those of you that are watching this for the first time, we take a very contrarian approach to how we uh, analyze UFC wagering. And part of it is, again, uh, my concept here is to teach you guys just kind of how to be contrarian uh, uh, in all things. Um, how to, I don't know, how, how to identify where the public is and how to identify what part of a line might be driven more by bias and and, and wishful thinking <laughs> um, and narratives than uh, relative to actual chances of, of winning. Um, this is the method that I've used in all forms of wagering where there's any kind of transaction costs involved, whether that be stock market, whether it be sports wagering, whether it be anything. And what I found with MMA wagering is it is particularly suited to this type of approach because you have this one kind of this set of fights that everybody is analyzing and it's not enough to analyze who they think is going to win, but everybody really needs to figure out how this, how the fight's going to go. And people's desire to do this leads people to, to latch on to, to narratives and latch on to, you know, most likely results and bidding those things up to the point where they're extraordinarily bad value. So the idea in contrarian wagering for MMA is to get a sense or not even get a sense to know where the public is, what the easy story there is to tell, and essentially realize that those particular stories um, are probably the last things you want to bet. So what we do is figure out what's the most logical, right? not the most logical, what's the thing that's been bid up and talked about the most, throw that out, and you can almost just kind of blindly bet everything else. But because we know a little something about these fights, what we're going to try to do is choose from the, the uh, outcomes that have actually a shot, you know, that are by definition good value because we're throwing out, you know, that which is uh, mortally obvious. So again, it's, it's, uh, it's just my approach to this type of sport where there's all kinds of chaos involved and yet people are still trying to, to, to pinhole uh, an exact uh, an exact outcome. Um, so uh, if this will help you get uh, you know the better of this card, that's that's great. But more to the point, if it gets you to think about these types of markets a little bit differently, then I think I've uh, done my job. So uh, let's just get right to it. The good thing about this particular card is, with the exception of one fight, really, people have been analyzing this card for several weeks because there was a you know there's there was a break in the UFC for for last week. So what's, again, what I really like is to um, wait as long as possible before uh, analyzing these things, which is not the usual, right? Most people that are kind of, you know, sharp wagers, they kind of get their bets in early and then try to, you know, figure out which way the line's going to go. I don't, I don't do that. What I try to do is, is I try to figure out as late as possible where the public is so that I know what the most obvious result is and I know what's a fade. Anyway, the, the one fight which is probably the least uh, appealing from this perspective is this is the is this late addition that be Evan Elder versus Darius Flowers. And the reason for that is they've just not been able to analyze this thing to death like they have others. I think people are just presuming that, you know, Evan Elder's just going to win and Darius Flowers is is taking this fight on short notice and uh, makes sense to me, I guess. But no one's really talked about how this is going to go. So uh, this fight is really a pass from a contrarian perspective, but th that's not going to happen here because the rules are, for those of you that thought I was going to forget, a uh, couple of rules. Number one is we are going to bet something every fight. And, and that's, and that's, not the best money management system in the world, but I don't care. Okay. Secondly, we're going to be betting one unit on every fight. And for us, uh, one unit is $180. And again, I think it's healthy for if people are going to, uh, to say who they like and who they're going to bet to actually say how much money they're betting. I know that everybody's all into their units and all this stuff. And I know that my bankroll is different than anybody, everybody else's, but whatever. Um, the, the, and of course, that's not the best money management, that's not the best money management system in the world either, but we don't care. 
And finally, because we know that we're going to probably lose every fight because we're being contrarian, what we're going to we're going to commit to is in the main event to get all our money back. So in the main event, we are going to have to find something that's at least 12 to 1 because there are 12 fights on the card. We'll lose the first 11 and we need to get our money back. So this first fight is probably a pass. Um, um, but because we have to do something, I guess we could just bet the fight to go to a decision or something like that. I, I think most people are expecting this fight to end early because Darius Flowers is taking this fight on short notice. So just because there's nothing else to do here, really, we'll just bet this fight to go to the distance. Uh, probably should just take Elder by decision because Flowers just isn't winning. So let's just do that. So Elder by decision for 180. But I'm telling you, this is not really anything contrarian about this um, because this was a late notice replacement fight, a late notice fight in general. So uh, there's really not a lot to do contrarian wise. So we'll just take Elder by decision just, you know, for nothing else to do. All right. Josh Frem versus Andre Petrowski. Um, okay. So I've seen people on both sides of this, you know, uh, there's probably going to be a lot of grappling, um, and I've definitely seen people on both sides of this. And one thing that I have noticed is that Andre Petrowski, people are saying is definitely gases as they get later into fights. Um, and when you're fighting at elevation, I've been told by everybody that, uh, you need to have really, really good cardio. And yes, that's true, but everybody's been saying it all week. So all the all the different narratives and all the results that are that are predicated upon you know the altitude affecting you has probably been bit up already. So what we have to kind of consider is maybe Petrowski does have bad cardio, and maybe bad cardio is bad at Denver, but maybe he wins anyway. Okay, because that narrative that friend is going to probably have better cardio and take over late is way too popular. So. What you can't bet here, for example, you can't really bet Petrosky early. And you can't really bet Frem late. So you can either bet Frem early to be contrarian or Petrosky late. So let's go ahead and bet Petrosky by decision. Petrosky by decision plus 350, again, for 180. Okay. Moving on, Luana Santos versus Maria Agapova. Um... You know, I have definitely heard a little bit of steam for Agapova here. People like to play fighters like this. They're very, very aggressive. They have a chip on their shoulder or whatever it is. And I've heard a lot of, of well, I think Santos might be the better, but there's no way I'm laying minus 380. So I actually do think a lot of the money is probably coming in on at the Agapova side. So in a weird way, it's probably better to be, if you want to be contrarian, to do something on the Santos side. Now, we're just not, not going to lay the minus 380, okay? But um, uh, we could certainly play play her uh, as a contrarian favorite. Let's put it that way. So how are we going to do this? Well, I have heard that she has quite the grappling edge. Um, so I guess Santos by sub is something that people are playing. So that's something that we probably can't play because it, it's too tied into the narrative. So what we could do is you could play Santos maybe by KO uh, or you can maybe play Santos by decision. Those are really the only things you could play here. Let's take a look at the odds. Santos by KO is plus 350. Uh, that's not bad, but Santos by decision seems safe enough. So we're going to play Santos by decision plus the 180 for 180. How do you like them apples? All right, we have Montel Jackson versus Damon Blackshear. Um... Okay, very interesting fight. You have Montel Jackson, who has definitely has a wrestling background, um, but he's become more of a striker recently. Damon Blackshear is 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 I don't want to say everybody's favorite, but he's been kind of the the you know the underdog du jour of the last like couple of fights. Actually, he had a really really big win over I think Jose Johnson uh, with a uh, twister or something like that. And so he's become everybody's hero. Uh, so if anything, I think Damon Blackshear might be a little bit too popular of an underdog here. 
So we are going to take the Montel Jackson side. The, the, the thing that I have seen, though, is that if Blackshear is going to win, it's going to be by getting a bunch of takedowns. So what I like to do when one fighter is supposed to be getting takedowns to get the wins, to play the other guy by submission. Because whenever you have, like, scrambling and, and takedowns and all this stuff, um, you um, – you know, anybody can really get submitted if 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 things don't, you know, if, if you, at least you're a competent grappler. And Montel Jackson is competent. So how about Montel Jackson by sub at plus 1,600? Like that? Uh, well, well, we're going to try it. The only thing I would say is that I would like to see at least one result where, um, let's see. One result, I want to see one, um, whatchamacallit, uh, sub on his record. Otherwise, I can't do it. Just one. I don't even care. It can be anywhere. Let's see. Montel Jackson. Uh, any subs? There it is. There it is right there against Kelleher. Let's go. Not too many. Just the one. Hey, that's right. Getting 16 to one. Let's do it. All right, moving on. We have Jasmine Jazdavicious versus Fatima Klein. So, you know, originally Fatima Klein got all this steam. And then all of a sudden, as people just kind of uh, kind of like got their wits about them, all the money kept coming in on Jasmine Jazdavicious. And there's like a whole bunch of recency bias here involved. I mean, like she's like everybody's hero now. She has a, I think, a nice win over Miranda Maverick, I believe. She had just destroyed Priscilla Cachuera. And the Fatima Klein's coming in on short notice. You know, she's 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 undersized. Jazz the Vicious is probably just going to rag dollar again at elevation. You know, very difficult to win at elevation, especially when you you know you're seeding the the, the grappling upside here. So. uh Jasmine Jazdavicious is obviously kind of the play, so we're going to take Fatima Klein here. Uh, the only question is, is how we are going to do it. Um, and the problem is, no one's really giving me an answer of how Fatima Klein is going to win. So I think what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing as this last fight. As long as Fatima Klein has a sub on a resume, I I'm, go I'm going to take a shot here. Uh, and... and commit to this idea that if this fight is taking place on the mat, then it's not just as likely, but Fatima Klein has, has submission upside also. There it is. Submission, rear naked choke right there. Um, let's just take a look. Yep. Fatima Klein by sub plus 750. Let's do it. Just gonna watch this one thing over here. Um, okay, wait one sec. Gotta come through over there. Just I'm just finishing up this one project. Um, moving on, we have Joshua Van versus Charles Johnson. Um, all right, this is a fight that, you know, people have been kind of, uh, you know, this is definitely, I'm going to say the people's main event, but people are really looking forward to this fight. You have two very, very good strikers here. They both have pretty good cardio. And I have seen some Charles Johnson uh, love. I've seen some Joshua Van. But one thing I've not seen is anybody finishing this fight inside the distance, okay? So what we should probably do is just bet the fight to not go uh, unless unless we have it in us to pick a side. In other words, like if we want to take Charles Johnson inside, but I don't know about that. If Joshua Van, you could play him inside the distance, actually. That's not terrible. But I'd like to see if I maybe can get like a, uh, a method of victory, but no one's really picking anyway for him to finish so we're just going to play him inside the distance i think let's see uh winning method van inside plus 400 sounds good to me
Okay. Um, it falls into the line of Charles Johnson being extremely durable and all that good stuff. So we'll just play Van to finish him. We have Abdul Harisak Al Hassan versus Cody Brundage. Cody Brundage, he really goes for it. He's going to be killer and be killed. Never really makes it past the second round anymore. And likewise, Abdul Razak Hassan, you know, he's, you know, they're, they're expecting him to bang with, with, with Cody Brundage. And whatever, whatever is going to happen, people are 100% sure that this is going to end in the first two rounds. So those are the things we can't bet. We can't bet Al Ras. We can't bet Al Hassan to finish. We can't even bet Cody Brunich to finish. The only thing we could bet here to be um to be somewhat contrarian is um is something late. Whether it be one of these fighters in the third round or by decision. So let's take a look at some of these atrocious look. Al Abdul Razak Hassan by decision is plus eight hundred. I mean, that's actually a a Bigger line than Brundage by decision. Um, I'm I'm gonna try it. Al Hassan by decision. You know one one of the things that can happen, by the way, when you have uh, altitude, is that people get tired. And you know what happens when people get tired? They don't do anything. <laughs> so yeah, it's possible that one guy gets tired and the other guy submits him, but. The other thing that happened is both guys get exhausted and they both look like like crap in the last couple of rounds. So uh, Al Hassan by decision plus eight hundred. I like that one a lot actually. All right, moving on. Julian Arosa versus Christian Rodriguez. Juicy J, his chin is gone. Heard that. Uh, and whenever you hear about someone's chin being gone, you know what you can't bet. You can't bet the other guy by KO. So. Christian Rodriguez by KO, we can't bet. Um, if anything, you could play the Arosa side as an underdog or C Rod by either sub or in or uh or by decision. So let's take a look at some of these. C Rod by decision is only plus 150. That's that's not up. That's no fun. We could just bet Arosa plus the 190. Try that. Um Is anybody really playing Arosa here? It's going to be us. Arosa plus the one ninety. I don't know how he's going to do it, so we'll just go plus one, you know, plus one ninety for one eighty. All right, moving along, and these are some atrocious bets we're making here, right? Um, Gabriel Bonfim versus Ange Lusa. I mean. Just presume everybody thinks Bonfim is going to win. Uh, the only thing is, is how is he going to win? He's certainly going to probably get him out of there early, if at all. So again, same thing. You can't really bet anything with Bonfim in round one, you know, or even by sub, because this is what people are expecting. If you want to be contrarian, you can really play anything else. So you could play Angelusa if you want, because I don't think anybody's playing him. Um, one thing about it is Bonfim has this kind of recency bias issue where in his last fight, he ran out of gas. So no one is going to want to play him late. So if I really had it in me, I'd play Bonfim in round two or something like that, or even round three, or by decision. So let's take a look at what some of these odds are, because that's really only, the only thing you can do here. Let's see round props. Bonfim round two is plus 350. That's actually not bad. And Bonfim by decision is plus 300. Again, like same thing, you know, if... um. These guys get tired. Maybe Bonfim just does enough to win. I think it's got to be a better line than better thing than Bonfim round two, right? Yeah, let's do this. Bonfim by decision plus 300. All right, we have Drew Dober versus Je Gene Silva. Okay, this one is easy, all right, because you got two bangers. Drew Dober comes and swings and bangs. John Silva, John Silva, last two fights, big knockouts. We don't know how this fight's going to go, but we do know that this fight is finishing. So we are going to bet this fight to go over. So it's going to be whether we go over the two and a, or the one and a half or over the two and a half or just the fight by decision. So let's take a look. Um, okay. 
Well, Silva by decision plus 600. And Dober plus 450, I don't think we need to do that. We could just play the fight to, what is this here? Oh, alternative total rounds. We can go over two and a half or plus 165. Yeah, I think that's fair enough. As opposed to just playing the over one and a half. Over one and a half, we have minus 130. Nah, we'll we'll play the plus 165. How about that? Or let's just go straight to decision. Hold on, let's see. Um, where do we find just fight to fight props? Fight to go the distance. Yes, plus 225. Let's go. That's what we do with all bangers. Bet the fight to go the distance. Um, okay, just a couple of more. Yep, uh, two more. Uh, Santiago Ponzinibbio versus Muslim Salikov. Uh, two older fighters, you know, even Ponzinibbio's last KO was a little bit fishy. Fight's probably going to be just kind of a boring striking battle or whatever. So what we're going to do is we are going to bet this fight to finish because I don't think anybody's expecting that. We could play one of these guys specifically to finish, but I, I don't really know which one that's going to be. So we're just going to bet this fight again inside the distance let's see popular is it winning method how does this work here? okay fight to go the distance no wow it's <laughs> the lay minus 160 that's like terrible i can't do that you know what i'll tell you what we're gonna do I don't think anybody's expecting Salikov to get the finish. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to play Salikov. And we, he's not getting a sub. So we'll just play Salikov by KO plus 350. Okay. And now we're at our last fight. You know, we've, we've made 11 atrocious bets. Now we have to get all of our money back in the main event. So let's just kind of review the atrocious bets that we've made so far. Evan Elder by decision. Again, that's it's not bad. Just wants something to do. Petrowski with his terrible cardio. How is he winning a decision? Well, we'll find out. Duana Santos, okay? Uh, how is this going the distance? You know, either Santos either knocks her out or maybe gets a, a sub, but, you know, th this fight's not going the distance. I mean, uh, Agapova's got no cardio. So at least, if, you know, the only way that this, I don't know, I don't know why we're doing this, but we'll take the plus 180 and we'll just lose. Montel Jackson against Damon Blackshear, who's an amazing grappler. Montel Jackson, how are we betting him to, to, to win by submission? I don't know, but because no one else is, I guess, plus 1,600. But Team McCline against, I mean, why are we doing this? Jasmine Jazdavicious has the, has the size. She has the rest. She's prepared. She has the grappling upside. So we're taking for Team McCline. If that's not bad enough, we're going to take her by submission. I mean, it's just so stupid. I don't know why we're doing it. Because it's contrarian. In the long run, this stuff like this, you know, ends up doing well. Uh, Joshua Van inside the distance. Um, again, people are expecting more of a, of, a, of a battle of durable fighters. So we'll play this one plus the 400. This one is almost a lock. All right. Abdul Razak Al-Hassan by, by decision. He's only going to win in round one and all this stuff. And these guys have great cardio. Good. Let them all get tired. And we win two two rounds to one, and we'll take the plus eight hundred. Uh, Juicy J, uh, Julian Arosa plus one ninety. This is probably a bad bet, but again, uh, there's really not a huge consensus on either side. May as well just take the underdog here. Bon Fiend, you know, cardio dump in his last fight. You know, he um, so it, just like what who is he against? Now I forget. Uh, whatever it was. Uh, he just got beaten his last fight by as a big favorite, trying to unload everything in the first round. There's no way that if it gets out of the first round, he's got a shot. So why are we doing this by decision? Beats me. Uh, Dober Silva, the big banger. So we bet this one to go to the distance, plus 225. Muslim Salikov by TKO again. People are expecting kind of an old, old versus old thing. Um, and... Uh, so we'll be betting on this fight to finish. 
And we're going to bet on the person that people are less likely believing that uh, gets the finish. Okay. Let's just go check something. One, two. So we have three, four, five, seven, eight. Uh, I've got to pause for just a second. Um, so we're going to end up going, looks like, oh, and 11. So we have to get all of our money back in this main event. So we have Rose Nama Yunus versus, uh, what's her name? Versus Tracy Cortez. And this is what people are completely set on is that Rose Nama Yunus probably has the edge pretty much everywhere, except maybe in the wrestling so if uh, Cortez is going to win, it's going to be by getting takedowns and things like that. Um, and the other thing that people are saying about Nama Yunus is people, they just can't forget that fight against uh, Asparza, where the fight was really boring, over five rounds, one of those boring fights in the world. And then in the last couple of fights, she's won kind of, uh, she's gone to a decision and what I think that people are forgetting is that she could win inside the distance. Okay. She's had first round KOs. She's, she's, she does have finishing upside, but people are just now just kind of set on her being kind of a decision machine. So what we're going to do is to get the 11 to one, we're going to probably play her in a specific round because her inside the distance is not good enough. Even her by sub is probably not good enough, or even her by KO isn't good enough. Yeah, look at this. Plus 400, 450, plus 800. So we're going to have to pick her in a round, and it's going to be an early one. It's either going to be round one or round two. And the good news is, is that round one is not 10 to one. So we're going to play, we're not 11 to one. So we're going to play Rose in round two plus the 1400. Tail at your own risk. Uh, and I will be putting these in uh, the uh, as soon as I log off of here. Uh, again, DraftKings is not really like Zoom too much, so it won't let me do it. But once I log off, I will be putting this stuff in. And again, hopefully you guys learned something, not so much about who to play this week, but how to think about these things in kind of a contrarian way. Again, tail at your own risk, to say the least. Uh, and that'll do it. Good luck, everybody.